Hello and welcome back to the Long Island Railroad Mundock branch. Today I'm going to do a layout update and I'm going to do it as if you haven't seen any of this stuff before, even though you've probably seen it in operations videos, but not a layout update. So I'll jump right in with this barge, which I uh, built out of styrene based on a pattern in Model Railroader. I think it was the October issue of uh, 2022. It pretty much is, follows that pattern, except that one was uh, had an interior well for you know holding coal or something like that. This one's just flat topped. Um, went together pretty easily, and it uh, it looked pretty good, so I like it. I may make more. The next thing I want to mention is the copper anodes. These things right here, which I actually had made by a uh, design guy who does uh, 3D printing design by, uh, let's see, names inside here, Multiscale Digital. And he did a really good job. I know I've mentioned him before. I uh, just want to remind you that he actually um, did all the design work for free because I gave him the rights to them so he can sell as many as he wants to other people. I bought, I think, uh, three sets so far, plus some loose ones. Um, painted them up, sent him a picture. So if you look, you'll, the picture that's there is mine. Uh, I like them. They came out really well. He did a good job. So I recommend that he, you, you use him. Not really excited about uh, Shapeways though, because they charge a lot. And they are kind of, they sneak in fees at the end there that are a little dubious. But anyway, that's what you can do when you're in a game of town. So I'm slowly working my way from left to right. So you've seen this building before. I don't know if I've talked about it in the layout update, but I basically took uh, two sides of the building that used to be there, which was, it's um, Walther's meat packing plant, somebody's meat packing, I don't know. Um, but I put, took two halves of that and actually put it on a, uh, styrofoam base that I made with my new styrofoam cutter. And these bits, it's made out of styrofoam. This is made out of styrofoam. This is all styrofoam. This is actually a, a, a plastic roof that I got uh, for like two bucks at, uh, at a train show. This track is for uh, the ore unloading. And this track is for coke, for the furnace. After I did that, finished that building, I uh, worked on this road right here. It, uh, it's new, didn't used to be a road here. But the uh, I made the road with um, a mixture of drywall mud, sand, and filtered sand, very filtered, very fine sand, and um, gray grout. And then I added some gray paint. And I mixed that all up, put some uh, balsa wood forms in to keep th this stuff contained, and just spread it all in. And it actually came out really well. I really like, you can't tell in the picture, but it's got a really nice texture uh, and it looks good and it, it sanded down nice. And I was able to use, maybe even use a skewer and you know cleaned all the stuff out next to the rails before it dried thoroughly. And uh, I like it. It's my new favorite way of making roads. And it's, the thing is, unlike um, like, this road right here where you can see there's been a chip and you can see a little bit of white right there. This stuff, since it's got paint mixed in it, nope, not going to happen. It's going to stay the same color no matter what happens. And it's really tough too. So nothing's going to happen to it. It's good stuff. So give it a try if you feel like it. Next on down the line is this uh, background structure. It's just um, styrofoam that I cut up with my styrofoam cutter and I added my old conveyor belt put it across the top and into the building down there just because I wanted something to do. I mean, it adds interest. It breaks up the monotony. And uh, I definitely was not going to let that stuff go to waste because I spent a long time on that. And next, I took the other two walls of that building down in the corner, glued them together lengthwise, and uh, made this building. This is going to be the, um, what, cathode or? And a cathode, <laughs> cathode loading. So the uh, the refinery, just getting the, the cars out of the way. 
um, you got anodes in and took those anodes in and made cathodes and then it made uh, final product, well not necessarily final, intermediate product from those like wire and, uh, and big old ingots. But some people want to do the cathodes straight um, so that they could do that to them. So some customers just wanted their own cathodes with 99.99% pure copper. Uh, so this is where that gets shipped out from. And I added uh, the lights. There's light there, there's a light above that door, and there's light above that door, and there's light inside too. Oh, and this, I want, mm, hang on, I want to show you something. This is pretty cool. Okay, this is what I wanted to show you. I actually used conductive uh, tape to um, connect all the lights for the most part. Uh, it's just copper, very thin sheets of copper that are sticky on one side. Um, but not on the other. So you can see, let me zoom in. I just took the leads directly from the lights, these leads right here, and uh, soldered them down to the pieces of copper. And well, you know, this has got a resistor because it's a 12 volt power supply, but only a three volt uh, light. And I just ran the copper tape and glued everything to the tape, not glued, soldered everything to the tape. And here's the, the wires that go under the board. Um, this is just a piece of sticky tape to hold it in place. And over here, I wanted to make sure that uh, since this piece of copper goes over this piece of copper, I wanted to make sure they didn't short. So I just stuck a piece of electrical tape behind it. And the, these, this copper goes up to the, uh, the light that's taped to the bottom of the ceiling of the building. So that was, um, it's actually pretty easy to use. I know it looks terrible, but who's going to see it? It doesn't look any worse than wires. And it uh, doesn't rattle around is one good thing. And also the lights, the wires, like if I had wires hanging down from the top, I would have had done to do something to secure them to the wall. Otherwise, you'd be able to see them through the windows. Uh, you don't have to worry about that with copper. And it's kind of fun too. And just, you know, you give it a little thought. You could do all sorts of things with the uh, conductive tape. So that's it. Just wanted you to see that. Pretty neat. And there it is with the lights turned on. And then once I got that done, moving along, I uh, rearranged this area here. That's just a concrete filler. Not concrete. You know what I mean. Styrofoam painted to look like concrete. And this building, which used to be right there, I turned it around and put it over here. And I took this building, which had been sitting on a shelf, waiting for me to find a place for it, and put it right there. And then filled in some of the grassy stuff back here to make it all more continuous. So now, so now all that's left to do is to complete this area down here, which will be, all be one large U-shaped structure. And now I can get to work on it because I have finally uh, fixed my the narrow gauge track plan. So now I know where things can go and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it was all kind of based on where the narrow gauge track was going to end up being. So I put down some foundation slabs and some loading platforms, and it'll be a big shed on this side. Well, actually, it'll be lower, and then it'll go up and over the top, and then lower on this side. And the crane will be covered. And it'll be a larger building on this side. And then this will be a different building still joined to these two where the coal will end up being delivered. And I'm thinking I will get another one of the uh, uh, champion packing plant buildings and using the walls from that to make the structure at the end that will kind of cover. It'll be in this area. So this, the upper part of this will be covered. I think it's going to look really cool, at least in my mind it will. <laughs> how it actually comes out, I don't know. But that's the plan. And then the last thing I want to talk about is I finally got the all my tracks and track and switches to complete the narrow gauge line, which, if you remember, starts over there behind the anode receiving shed, goes around the corner, crosses that new road, comes down here, splits off into these two tracks, which will be a passing siding, and then this is uh, the spur that leads to the coal loading dock. Move on down. And here's where the siding 
comes back together. And this will just be a storage track right here. And as I showed you before, this siding will go into the large building for delivering the, uh, the anodes. Another thing you can see is that I've dummied up the uh, elevated track here just to get an idea for how it was going to work. The uh, elevation right here is two and a half inches, which is about as low as it could possibly go and still let all my cars through. Uh, what I've discovered is that this slope is actually too big for my little engine here to pull the six coal cars up. So I turned this setback into an opportunity. So what I'm going to do is I'll buy another Cato chassis and probably make a slug out of it or maybe disguise it as another freight car. Uh, I don't know what I'll do, but then I'll have two engines and that should be sufficient to pull the, uh, the six coal cars up the slope and into the, the coal loading facility, or rather unloading facility, down there at that end of the table. Now the track is all Pico Code 80 track, and it's HON30 uses the same track as N-Gage. But the thing is, this is HON30 track because the ties are spaced further apart than they would be if it was N-Gage track. It looks a little more realistic. Uh, same with the turnouts. Now these are also Pico turnouts, which mechanically work fine, but electronically I am not impressed because they're supposed to be power routing electrofrog and in several of the, uh, the switches one way or the other, it's not making a good connection between the rail and the, the point rail and electricity doesn't flow. I've, I've got it running now, but every once in a while engines will stall in that area and I have to like kick it to make it work again. I do not like the Pico Electro Frog switches, and I will never use them again. Fortunately, I don't have to. So, so much for that. And one thing I wanted to mention briefly is I saw these Wago connectors on one of Larry Puckett's videos, and I think they're awesome. Uh, I got these on, I guess, Amazon. I think the unit price was 39 cents each. So yeah, they're a little expensive for what they do, but if you don't like uh, soldering underneath your board, you know, lying on your back and getting solder dripped from your face, these are great. No soldering necessary. Just a couple of clips with your wires, strip some wiring, and you're done. So I really like them. If you uh, have more money than time, then this is the way to go. If, if you've got all the time and are a good solderer, then yeah, you don't need them. But uh, I think they're worth the money. So there they are. And the last thing I wanted to mention is if you remember in the last layout update, I complained about the switch I had here because it lit up when it was off and was not lighted when it was on. Someone pointed out that that's what it's supposed to do because what happens is when you turn the light out, the switch lights up so you can find it in the dark, which is so extremely logical that I really, um, Thought I was stupid for not figuring that myself. But, oh well, there you go. I, I learned something. So I took another switch and put it over here and wired up a little LED to the a, uh, AC accessory outlet from the, uh, the power pack so that this light lights up whenever I turn it on. And it works just fine. So that's it. Next, I will be filming, uh, finishing up the uh, operations for, um, for doing this area now that it's somewhat presentable. And then I will be working on that building. And maybe in a couple months, I'll be able to do a layout update that shows it completed. So you all got that to look forward to. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.